Howdy doody. Right, in this video, I'm going to discuss the constraints that need to be taken into consideration when creating 3D models. So when you are creating 3D art, especially for real-time applications such as games, there are a number of constraints that the artist needs to consider. So I'm going to discuss the hardware-based ones in this video, and they include things such as polygon count, render time, and file size. So we'll start with polygon count. And, as the name suggests, the constraint here is on the number of polygons or faces that can be used to construct a shape. The more polygons that appear within the render view, the longer each frame will take to render. This constraint applies equally to real-time applications such as games, as well as non-real-time such as animation or special effects. This is directly linked to the hardware available. For an example, let's look at games hardware, specifically the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. If all they had to do was calculate polygons, and not any of the other stuff such as textures, operating system, or gameplay elements, then the Xbox 360 could render 500 million polygons per second, and the PS3 could manage 275 million per second. And that does sound like a lot, but if you then take into account that games need to render at least 30 frames every single second, then the number of polygons that can be shown then drops to 16.6 million for the 360 and 9.1 million for the PS3. Again, that might sound like a lot, but the consoles are doing a lot more than simply rendering polygons, and these things use a lot of system resources. Let's have a look at some examples which show how polygon counts have been allowed to increase as hardware has also become more advanced. So the first example is the Half-Life Zombie from 1998, and he was constructed of just 844 polygons, which looked okay at the time, but looks very boxy now. If we then move on to Marcus from Gears of War in 2006, you can see a vast improvement in the quality, and that's because he's made of 15,000 polygons. And the final example I've got for you here is a still from the game Lair from 2007, released on PS3. And this game showed 134 million polygons on screen every second. And as an example, out of that, the Dragon and the Rider were 150,000 polygons between them. And keep in mind that 134 million polygons is per second, so the amount on screen needs to be divided by 30, in the same way we discussed earlier. Okay, let's move on to render time. Again, this is a very descriptive name, and it concerns the time that's taken for each frame to render. This is a huge constraint for real-time 3D graphics. For a game to run at 30 frames per second, which is seen as the minimum that games should be achieving, then the hardware needs to render 30 frames each and every second. This is quite an achievement when you take into consideration how long it can take to render a frame of a 3D animation such as Toy Story 3. The frame here took 16 hours to render, and that's just for one frame. Remember, that film runs at at least 24 frames per second. So if you keep that in mind, then it would have taken around 384 hours or 16 days to render just one second of Toy Story 3. So this means that render time can be costly in two ways. The first way is for games and concerns performance. If the game drops noticeably below that magic 30 frames per second, then the player will become aware of the drop in performance, which will then have a negative impact on their experience. We've all had lag before, and we don't like it. The second way in which this can be costly applies to pre-rendered projects, and it's the monetary cost that we're concerned with here. The longer a project takes to render, then the more that's going to cost in equipment, resources such as electricity, and more expensively in manpower. Okay, the final constraint we're going to talk about in this video is file size, and this is a constraint for two main reasons. The first of these is that 3D graphics need to be saved somewhere. This could be onto a disk, such as a Blu-ray, a hard drive, or somewhere in the cloud waiting for a digital download. For these reasons, the file sizes need to be kept efficient to make sure that they fit onto the media they are designed for. If the 3D art is not kept efficient, then it might have to be split over more than one disc, which is what happened with Final Fantasy VII, or it might take a very, very long time to download a game over a digital distribution system such as Steam or Xbox Live, especially if you've got a slower internet connection. The second reason that this is a constraint is heavily linked to hardware and performance of real-time applications. The hardware this relates to is the amount of RAM available to a system. For the Xbox 360, this was 256 megabytes. Within this small amount of memory, everything that might be needed at that point in the game needed to be read from the disk and stored for very quick access. So this includes geometry, textures and shaders, animation, audio, gameplay instructions, as well as any information needed for running the underlying operating system. This meant that the polygon count and textures for the 3D art needed to be kept very efficient. If there was not enough space available in the RAM to store enough of the game assets, the player might experience a very low draw distance or a drop in performance as more assets are loaded from the disk or other storage media. This was very noticeable in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, when the game would stutter as new geometry was loaded in when moving through the environment. You can see that happening in this video. In some cases, you can also see assets appearing out of nowhere as the draw distance has to be reduced to keep the game running at a reasonable rate. You can see that in this example as well. Okay, so that's covered everything to do with constraints that I wanted to cover in this video. 
I hope that's been useful to you. Again, if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments, get in contact with me on Facebook, uh, and subscribe. Always subscribe. Okay, thanks. Bye.